Nobody had to take anybody to the High Court to start telling kids this nonsense. And yet to remove it, we have to. Personally, I think Boris is gutless. I think the whole of the Tory government is gutless. They know what's going on. They're conservatives, for God's sake. I wish they would be conservative. For the wrong to rule, the good must just stand idly by. Hello. Um, most of you who've been paying attention to the madness of the world in the last couple of years or longer will be familiar with Posey Parker, um, Kelly J. Keane. And um, today I'm lucky enough to talk to her. She's got taken some time out of her busy day to talk to me. Hello. Good morning. How are you? Yeah, I'm great. How are you? Thanks for having me. No, my pleasure. For those people, the very small number who don't know, um, could you tell us just a bit about yourself? Uh, so I'm a happily married woman, heterosexual, uh, mother of four, um, who discovered this nonsense in about 2015. And by this nonsense, I mean the creep of transgender ideology, uh, obliterating the rights of women and the safeguarding of children. And so in 2018, my first sort of act uh, of public defiance was to put a dictionary definition of the word uh, woman on a billboard uh, and it was removed for hate speech. And so that, in a nutshell, is kind of where I am. I love it. I wanted to ask you this, actually, because um, I, 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 have a, I have personal skin in the game. Um, I've been noticing a couple of odd things happen. My eldest son came home one day and I said to him, can I have a hug? And he went, no, you have to ask my consent. And yeah. I was like, what? And he, uh, so I emailed the school and they went, what's consent? It says, oh, we teach this stuff in PHSE. So I'm like, oh, this sounds interesting. What else do you teach in PS, uh, PHSE? So I sent an email to an, my other son's school and I said, could you provide me with the resources, the lesson plans and the schemes of work for my son? Uh, he's 10, year five. Um, they came back. This is some of the, some of the highlights. To ex explore the concept of privilege, the importance of diversity, equity and inclusion to promote people's opportunities. And here we have my favourite one, that for some people, gender identity does not correspond with their biological sex. Why are they teaching this to my child and why, is, why are they getting away with it? Well, that's a really good question. I think the reason they're teaching it is because we have a lot of young teachers who've been going through the university system over the last 10 years. And they're now deciding the curriculum. And I think often with mediocrity and maybe teachers that don't have the passion for teaching, uh, there is another, a dual purpose, which is to indoctrinate children into whatever it is that they think is the uh, reason of the day. And at the moment, it seems to be transgenderism and privilege. And I think there is nothing more privileged than a bunch of privileged people talking about privilege. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure those sort of discussions don't go on in lesser, more mortgage hungry households, to be honest. Um, so I think it's just it's just people trying to make a name. It's competitive niceness and kindness. It's all of those things that feed into it. But ultimately, if you've got a passion for history um, or if you've got a passion for maths, you're not going to be talking about gender identity. You're going to be talking about your own subject. So I wonder if that's got something to do with it. Do you think there's, this, there's, a, there's an interaction between this idea of privilege and you alluded to it there in terms of, uh, you know, less well-off people and their children in school. This concept of privilege, which we've become obsessed with, this white privilege idea, that one of the ways that white people can get into the oppression olympics is via the gender ideology via via saying well actually i'm a girl so i'm now or a boy and i'm now part of the the grievance olympics as well do you think they're linked in any way well yeah i do because with privilege or lack of privilege apparently comes power which is like a bit of an oxymoron of an idea uh the less privileged you are the more power you have in the privilege olympics because the further you are down the bottom the more you can demand people bend to your whim and it's 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 really frightening because none of this is tangible or real and so you can just make stuff up i mean you could decide today that you're actually uh laura <laughs> and we would all have to think that you were the most oppressed person in the room where actually you're a hateful rich white man I am. I'm, and also, I'm so privileged. I'm really happy to accept my privilege and talk about it. But I talk about it in terms of class privilege. Like yeah. I grew up very. I was very lucky, and my children will grow up the same. But why do you think it's? Um, 
Why has this? Uh, I know you. Were, I was watching you the other day talking about Matt Walsh and his documentary, the "What Is a Woman" documentary. Why do you think that this simple idea of what a woman is? He, I think he says actually alludes to it in the documentary. He says you wouldn't have thought ten years ago that someone's tweets would have been, you know, "What is a woman?" What? Why? Why the destruction of women? Why the obliteration of women from society? And why do politicians think it's a vote winner? Well, the the latter question I'll ask I'll I'll answer last. But as far as what is a woman and why that is uh, such a contentious issue, it just goes back to misogyny and sexism. And I hate to talk like it because then it makes me sound like I'm some sort of helpless victim. And I know that many women are also very much on the what is a woman anyone can identify as if we sort of reach some bastion of equality and now we can just give it away. But without going into the ins and outs of how women have a different path in this world, I think we all know that we do, uh, a man can simply identify as one because what are we? we? We are apparently just men without penises or sometimes women with penises. But we, if we were seen as full, complete humans with agency and autonomy, I don't think you could take our language quite so quickly as it's been stolen from us um, or given away by other women. So I'm not letting women off the hook here at all. I think there there are scandalous levels of privileged women who are just happy to not think about the more vulnerable woman who doesn't want to share her space with a man. And I would say about 90% of women really don't understand that the person that they are going to share a space with could be any man who calls himself a woman. Now that might be for nefarious reasons. It might just be because they want to do it for a day so they can get into women's spaces. It might be because they're a raging autogynophile and a pervert and just get off in women's spaces. Or it might be because they really couldn't care less about the uh, dignity, privacy or safety of women and want to use women's spaces. But there's no good man, uh, however he identifies, who wants to use women's private spaces. Mm. And as for the politicians, um and a vote winner um aren't they stupid i it kind of it just makes me think that they spend their whole day not talking to people who do normal jobs tangible dirty hand jobs uh, they just look at twitter and decide that that is actually important people <laughs> discussing their opinions as opposed to a small portion of the population talking way too much about things that are ludicrous and and it is interesting that, that this idea of w- women and men, because I can, for example, I very vocally uh, get very, I get upset, mainly, I think, probably because my history was, I, I was raised by my mum. I mean, my dad worked and stuff, but my mum was my primary carer. So I always thought that I was being raised in a matriarchy, essentially. She called all the shots and everything like that. So I'm a big defender of women, but I don't really get attacked when I point out these obvious things. But women seem to be utterly and totally sat on my men and that's again it's a misogyny thing just dressed up as um compassion and kindness is it yeah absolutely look if you told me right now that you wanted to go and use the women's toilets because you preferred it everyone would just say that you were a predator and a pervert if you call yourself laura you're stunning and brave and, and i'm an evil bigot for saying that you can't go in i mean the rape and death threats i don't actually get that many um I do get some really awful things said about my children. Um, My husband's business has been targeted. Um, You know, it's it's big, the response. And the, I I think it helps that I'm not on Twitter. Uh, So I don't get too many uh, terrible things uh, sent to me over Twitter. But I've had websites, they've put pictures of my kids online. Um, They've put pictures of my children um, and copied in their schools so people know where, which school they go to. Um, I do get sent things about like my kids dying of cancer. Um, so it is it is pretty bad, but it it's just it just comes down to misogyny over and over again. And you know, it's not just in this movement. I'm sure you've covered the grooming gang scandals before, um, and the the sort of rape and trafficking of of children, predominantly girls. So it it is wide reaching it's horrible to admit it and it's a really nasty thing when you eventually understand what underpins it but um 
yeah, women are going along with it, which I find uh, just atrocious. And uh, it's it's difficult to reconcile. Yeah, it was, it was so interesting watching the um, the Leah Thomas interview and and how completely lacking in any insight or self-knowledge that this uh, man has and um what what what, what did you because I also saw that you went you went over there and um made your voice heard and my yes. favorite bit was when you went I'm not a vet but I know what a cat is um which which made me giggle what what what's your take on um Leah Thomas is this a is this a is it, is it body dysmorphia is it narcissism is it um is it what what, what, what do you what's your take on her him I don't know, a heterosexual man in the girls' locker rooms. I have no idea what to make of that. Um, I think I think he was a mediocre swimmer. I think maybe he's an autogynophile. I have no idea. I've not spent any time with him. I have stood in a room where he is, like not just in the pool, but I also happen to share the hotel where he was staying. He's, ma- <laughs> he's massive. Um, yeah. I probably come up to under his chest. I mean, I am quite little, but he's a really big bloke. And the the scary thing was, so outside of the pool, I talked to a couple of the girls. They are not allowed to say a word. Their parents aren't allowed to say a word. I had another encounter with um, an autogynophile, which is somebody who is sexually aroused by themselves as a woman. They get turned on by themselves as women. Um, and his name was, well, his name is Don or Dawn, but if you say it with an American accent, it's the same name. Um, so his name was Don, and he uh, he was chatting, and I was asking him not to use women's spaces, and then one of the dads came along and spoke, and he was really frightened about being identified, uh, and his daughter losing a space, not just on the team, but then at university, then at anything that comes from that university education, especially because a lot of them are really good universities, uh, and these kids have got scholarships, there's huge amounts of money, um, so I don't know. It could be money for Leah Thomas or Will Thomas. It could be money for him. But whatever it is, it's not nice. And I don't believe that he is ultimately a victim in this story at all. I think he is. He's a very entitled young man. And what and what should we do as a society to 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 deal with these issues? Should um, should, should there be an open category for uh, those? people that identify as trans should we um sh- should we make sure that we're not we're not encouraging this in children because we're seeing a doubling with every generation of people that I, I suppose it's a sort of transhumanism isn't it in a way people yeah. just don't want to be part of their own bodies so what what should we do what what, what would what would be your solution to that to the leah thomas peculiar problem well i think we open the door for adults to come back in the room to be honest um look I don't get to be in a swim team um, and I don't get to be in a swim team because I'm not a fast enough swimmer. So if I'm if I'm not uh, at the category of if I don't want to swim with men and I'm a male, then I don't swim. Uh, it's not a life or death situation. So I'm quite happy for people not to have uh, the opportunity to do something if they don't fit the criteria. Um, it's, the, it's the same, especially in sport. I mean, but in in every place. Like we could start creating third categories, third categories for toilets and changing rooms and so on. But we have male and female. They've served us pretty well for a long time. I just think let's just start saying no. I'm sorry. If you don't feel like a man and you don't want to use the men's toilets and you are a man, then uh, you can have the uh, urinary leash and you can stay home uh, because that's what happens that's what happens in life. I mean, how privileged are we in the UK that we've got public toilets, public changing rooms, that we do have these sporting things? There are people in the world that can't find enough to eat. I mean, for goodness sake. Mm. Do you think? Do you think there's an element of this sort of um, very over? sort of decadent culture that we live in that comes with social media and all these things that that these the the swimmers the swimmers and their parents won't speak out because of their fear of of cancel culture and of the fact that anything that they say now will 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 haunt them for the rest of their lives and and that's what stops them speaking out so does social does social media have a responsibility to um allow a broad and open debate about this stuff and what what if anything can be done to stop the censorship on online there well, I've been banned from Twitter since 2018 for saying that women don't have penises. 
Um, oh, I've also been banned from Mums now. I'm banned from Patreon. I'm not allowed to sign a petition on change.org. I can't sell anything through Teespring. Um, and YouTube demonetized most of my content. So um, I think if you, they've either got to make up their mind. They're either publishers or they're not. They either decide what content is or they don't. Uh, but this idea that they get to, I think it was it MySpace beforehand. So YouTube basically encouraged everybody to come to YouTube and then change the rules. So I, I do think social media has a responsibility, but then it's a little bit, like you go on some places where it is free speech and they are scary, horrible places. So there has to be some balance, I guess. I mean, I listened to the woman who is in charge of what people can or cannot say on Twitter and she was just dishonest. Uh, mm. You know, they, they are dishonest and they are persuaded by this bizarre faux civil rights thing that's transgenderism and the true civil rights uh, being fought in this entire movement is women trying to hold on and reclaim back the rights that we've lost. Mm. There, there seems also to be, it seems to be a, a systemic attack on language so that, you know, obviously the first words a child learns it, in the majority, obviously, of a kid comes from a same-sex relationship, then it's different. But in the, the first words 90% of children learn are mum and dad, mum mm. and papa, aren't they? Uh, so this this desire to, to just destroy our language, to stop us being able to communicate, to be scared to use words as well, do you think that's part of what's, um, part of what's going on here? To, to ask us to accept the absolute, you know, the, the, you know, we ignore the evidence of our eyes and ears, the Orwell line. Mm. Is, yeah, that, is that part of the problem? Well, of mm. course, if you if you want to control the way people think, the first thing you have to do is control what they say. I mean, there's there's plenty of nations on this earth right now that do it in far more grand gestures. You know, in, in China, you can't even use the numeric date of the Tiananmen Square massacre uh, because on all of their search engines, it won't it just won't provide anything, which means 15 percent of Chinese people, 25 and under, cannot identify the uh, Tiananmen Square, the man standing in front of the tank. I think it's called Tank Man. So they can't identify that because that information has been erased from anywhere they can find it. So there is going to be a generation of children, if we're not careful, um, that won't be able to categorically say what a woman is. They won't be able to categorically say that women don't have penises because they will have been raised in a situation where those things are not permitted to be said. And I think that is such a massive danger um, that, mm. you know, we all know what a woman is, right? I was born of one, as we all were. Um, and when when sexism occurs, that even those people like Keir Starmer, who might say he doesn't really know what a woman is or that some women have penises, I guarantee he knows exactly what a woman is when it comes to certain situations or roles in his life, he will know. Mm. Mm. It's interesting, actually, the Tiananmen Square thing, because on the anniversary of Tiananmen Square, I googled Tiananmen Square, and I couldn't find anything on on it at all. I could, I went through all of YouTube trying to find the footage of what happened, and I just couldn't find it anywhere. So that there, there is a there is a mass obliteration, and they say that in America, two thirds of kids don't know that the Holocaust happened. So this stuff is really, really, really dangerous. Um, what are we going to do about it? What's well, the plan? I think, well, for me, um, I'd say to my uh, the people who watch me on YouTube, you know, if not you, then who? So I think it really has come to a point where everybody who knows the truth needs to speak the truth. Um, we can't all be arrested. I mean, I've been interviewed under caution twice and interviewed uh, and arrested once um, for speaking up about this. Uh, I just think what more do we need we've got mutilated children right throughout the united states of america girls as young as 12 years old getting their breasts sliced off we've got fertility being stolen from children um we've got girls being groomed into having their breasts cut off in this country at 18. Uh, you can go to a, a surgeon in fact he's got some really beautiful commissioned artwork of him slicing breasts on his wall uh, and you can go to this surgeon and within three months of saying i think i'm a boy you can have your breast cut off now, I don't know about you, but I wasn't a grown up at 18. I very much was barely a grown up at 25, but I certainly wasn't at 18. And so I think, 
you know, it the stakes are really high already. And I think people should be far more fearful about what happens if they re remain silent than if they speak up. Because remaining silent means what? More kids groomed into it, more language obliterated, uh, more rights erased. Um, you know, it, it's just, it's insurmountable where we're heading if people don't start speaking up. I agree 100%. We, um, last week we launched a new project called the Bad Law Project. And um, one of the people that we're talking to is a young 14 year old boy who was suspended from school for misgendering uh, another pupil and I've got all the recordings of the meetings from the teachers and with the parents and they're absolutely horrendous what uh, what what the teachers were saying to this child he was removed from school for two weeks he was then returned to school and is suffering horrible bullying as a result about it do you think that one uh, that there is uh, our view is that there we we need to launch legal battles against schools that behave in this way and do you think that that's a good idea I do think it's a good idea. I think it's quite appalling that it's necessary because nobody had to take anybody to the high court to start telling kids this nonsense. And yet to remove it, we have to. Personally, I think Boris is gutless. I think the whole of the Tory government is gutless. They know what's going on. They're conservatives, for God's sake. I wish they would be conservative. Um, so I, I think it probably is necessary and it is a good idea. And the more light we shed on this, um, complete lunacy, the better. But I'm really quite annoyed, especially when most of the people launching these campaigns and legal battles really don't have any money. And it's the same people digging their hands in their not particularly deep pockets to fund this, while you've got billionaires uh, right throughout the globe pushing this ideology. And to what end, I have no idea, but it's, it's evil. And I say this as somebody who is definitely not a theist. But it's it's quite evil what is is happening. Uh, it's mm. just it's confusing for kids and it's not true. Mm. Um, do you think uh, so? Also, I was watching last week. You were talking about your Waitrose delivery driver. Um, can you please tell us the Waitrose delivery driver story for those that haven't seen it or heard it already? Because this is just a cracker. <laughs> So, I, I mean, I've had a few uh, occasions. So when you drive to my house, I've got my offices outside and I've got big stickers on the door. And one of them is adulthumanfemale.store, which is the name of my website. And so he delivers everything. And I haven't looked at his name, so I didn't know that he identified as a woman. And quite frankly, in my own home, if somebody comes along, um, I may or may not say anything but normally I would just leave someone to get on with their job but anyway so he's packed up he's putting the crates back in the lorry and he just looks and he says oh what's that sign then what's that I'm interested in that adult human female and I said oh well I'm a women's rights campaigner I said I just uh, it's all about stopping men from being in women's spaces and language and whatever and he said um well yeah of course men shouldn't be in women's spaces I said oh good glad we agree and then he said um well, you include trans women as women. And I said, oh, no, absolutely not. And he said, oh, I'm a trans woman. I said, really? OK. Um, yeah, I can see that. Uh, anyway, he then starts saying that he likes using women's. I said, well, which is I feel it's my duty to tell these men because I want to disabuse them of any notion that they are allowed to use women's spaces and it doesn't make women feel uncomfortable. So if they've they've decided that I want to make sure that they know that that isn't true. So I said, I would have really appreciate it if you don't use women's spaces, it makes women and girls feel uncomfortable, you know, especially someone like my teenage daughter. And he said, oh, I like using women's spaces. I was like, okay, here we go then. And I said, okay, well, I'm, I'm telling you don't. I'm telling you don't because women don't like it very much. And he said, oh, I don't like using uh, men's spaces and I said well that isn't the problem of women and you make more women feel uncomfortable than just yourself so you can't use them anyway he then I said he carried on and said I enjoy using them I'm going to continue so I said well you can get off get off my land but going harking back to my uh, Somerset roots I said get off my land get out of my driveway leave my house now and he said I'm going to take my time and so I did use a numerous expletives at that point and asked him to really get off my property and then i got an email from waitrose uh telling me off for abusing a member of their staff 
Um, and I've written back and heard nothing. But it's just really interesting that, you know, like I said to you before, if he had said, I like using women's toilets and he didn't call himself, let's say, Sarah, um, then I would be well within my rights to say whatever I like to him because he's a predatory pervert. Uh, but I'm not allowed to say those things in 2022 to a man who told me he enjoys using the same spaces, private spaces, as my 15-year-old daughter. It's unbelievable because any man will tell you um, that, you know, you go into a men-only changing space and there are a significant minority of men who really like to dangle their bits around in front of everybody. <laughs> they really do. They like to pr proudly stroll through. And it makes a lot of men feel uncomfortable because men are quite private as well. Do, do you think, OK, this is an odd question. Do you think there's ever a chance for a biological man, So, uh, say a biological man who's had full everything, all of the surgeries and everything like that, do you think that there is a case for those people to use uh, female-only spaces at all? Or is it a blanket ban on anyone with an XY chromosome? For me, it's an absolute no. I, I also mm. really do feel sort of morally any so, sort of transition, any surgery that leaves you with a less healthy functioning body than before that is an absolutely imperative. I think it's I think it's a horrible place for our society to be in. Um, and you don't have sexual function after transition. And we do have to question the motives of the people that do want this sort of transition. Um, if it is a real loathing and hatred of their bodies, then I really do think we work on their minds and their brains and their emotional health, not chopping off their penis or inverting it or whatever the hell else. I mean, they do nullification surgery in the United States now, which means from here to pipe work, you have nothing. So you get your nipples removed, you get your belly button removed, you get your external genitals removed. Um, you might be able to have other surgeries where you have your, you keep your penis but lose your testicles and your testicles create a cavity that's supposed to be a vagina. I mean, it, it's just, we've got to a point where we think because we can, we should. And I absolutely don't think uh, that we should at all. I think we should encourage people to, to accept the body that they're in. Uh, because it's an, a magnificent thing. Yeah, and there are there are obviously going to be a few people that genuinely, genuinely. There was a good bit in Douglas Murray's book actually about you know that one of the early transitioners, and there are some genuine people. But a lot of this stuff feels like it's it's totally psychological, and um, the explosion of it is dreadful. What 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 do you think about? Um, I I was I was a big fan of, and I am a big fan of. Um, equal rights for uh, all people as much as possible um, and certainly gay gay people and the and the civil rights movement towards you know early pride for example and that original rainbow flag doesn't bother me too much but this new rainbow flag with this T in it seems to me to completely undermine what the whole point of what pride is because uh, transsexualism to me seems very homophobic because you're being told as a gay man that if you don't want to have sex with a, a trans man for example that you are therefore transphobic which to me seems very homophobic because you're having you're being encouraged to have sex with a biological female which is going against your um, mm. hardwired sexuality so what what do you think what do you make of pride and the development of pride as it's come along Pride now seems to be um, an exhibition of sexual fetish uh, often. I mean, obviously, pride in places like Russia and places where there is an absolute need to reduce homophobia and uh, just some terrible attacks on uh, gay and lesbian people. I think that's a great, it's, it's still a great movement, can be a great global movement. But in the UK, do we need it? No. Do we want a parade where there's men in rubber dog suits uh, on leashes and kids coming along and petting them or police officers standing with them? No, I don't think so. Um, when you see sort of BMW or any of the big car companies with their pride logos all for the months of June, but except in Saudi Arabia, then you know it's absolute nonsense, lies, uh, deceit, dishonesty and corporate greed. So, uh, no, I, I, I think many of my lesbian friends act really, really actively hate 
pride and what it stands for these days um many of my straight friends though straight female friends they still love a pride so make of that what you will <laughs> it seems you mentioned the police and um and and that and that obviously we work with i work with harry and harry's got a huge um you know, focus on the police. Um, ha- if the police are to attend Pride, which I think, and you know, I'm, I struggle with this idea because you know you have the Gay Police Officers Association, you have the Black and Asian uh, uh, Police Officers Association, you have all types of inward facing um, police movements. But if the police are to attend Pride, what what would your advice to them to be? You know, if they wanted to be there and they wanted to say, you know, I'm I'm a I'm a gay man and I or and I want to express myself in pride should they be allowed to um go with the with the rainbow colored dongles or pretending to be police dogs or whatever or should should the police just be very simply there you know expressing them expressing their support but without you know they they're there to police all communities without fear or favor but they seem to only police that community uh, support that community particularly I don't want to see them. I don't care what police think about anything. I want them just to come to my house if I'm burgled and keep people safe on the streets. I don't. I I don't care if they support Liverpool. I I've read uh, police Twitter before where they say something terrible about Margaret Thatcher. I don't care what they think about those things. That's not their job. Same as I don't care what my Waitrose delivery driver thinks about adult human female. Uh, d- just do your job. I I want to know that if I get burgled. Um, that they will come and investigate the crime to the best of their ability. I don't need to know that that person goes home to a heterosexual household, to a gay kibbutz, whatever it is. It's not really of any interest. And I think it diminishes the seriousness with which we take the police force. Um, It's just, it's bonkers, isn't it? We did a Mm. survey at Standing for Women. We did a survey of all the police forces in the country and whether or not they differentiate between a serving officer who is a female, a serving officer who says they're female, or a serving officer who has a GRC to say they're female. And the majority of the police forces in this country, in fact, I think not one came back and said that they differentiated between an actual female officer and somebody who just said they were female. So at this point, the police really need to take back, um, it's all about grown-ups, isn't it? But they need to take back their professional duty, which is to serve i think harry talks about this as well we used to have a police force now we have a police service i want them to be a police force and that force should be for fair uh fairness justice and um the truth that'll do that's so good and i agree with you 100 percent. in terms of men so um I, I you know i think a lot of this as well is to it, is part of the emasculation of men de- deliberately you know heightening this this um trans woman issue is to is to celebrate um men that aren't you know operating correctly mentally in my view it's a sort of it's a dysmorphic at best body dysmorphia at worst uh, mental disorder um what would your advice be to men who want to um raise their children and, and express T- teach them a balanced view to you know obviously not to be bigoted in any way towards people but what would you say to men what can we do to to help in this situation good gracious i think the first thing that men uh and women have to do is have mutual respect for each other in the home so children get good modeling i think that is really really fundamental and important um Sorry, one of my posters is falling off my ceiling um <laughs> the other thing i think men need to do is just tell the truth. I think um, I think everybody should get a bit of Jordan Peterson in their lives. I think he has a really good message to men, which is kind of grow up. I think we allow the adolescence of uh, men in particular to go on far too long. Um, I don't know. I think it's it's the same as all people. I don't necessarily think men have a different path than women. I think we have different strengths, but I think being true to oneself but also accepting that truth is not necessarily a subjective thing but it's an objective thing be a good citizen be law-abiding don't drink too much lay off the porn um don't go to lap dancing clubs um actually have respect for women like you would want your mother to be respected i think those sorts of things are really useful but that goes for women as well 
Um, the emasculation, emasculationization of, I can't say it, um, emasculating men is not a good thing. There is, there is this weird, toxic masculinity we talk about. I don't even know what that is. Um, I think that masculinity is a really useful, wonderful, very attractive thing as far as I'm concerned. And I think that's how most women feel, but we're, we have to pretend that I don't want a man that sits at the table and cries. Thanks very much. I don't cry very much. I like stoicism. I like somebody to be resilient. But then again, that goes for women. I'm, I'm sick and tired of being told that uh, we are weak, that femininity means weakness. I mean, I, I carried four babies. I don't see any weakness in that whatsoever. It's not, uh, uh, I've not come across seen femininity as a weakness. Uh, lionized in, in certainly in in the family i grew up in so maybe i was very lucky what i think is so is so interesting and wonderful you know in your advocacy for just common sense and truthfulness and and personal integrity is that this is not a political issue it has nothing to do with politics whatsoever and i suppose for me the hope is that once people realize that it isn't a political issue more of us can come together and talk about it thank you so much posy can you tell us where people can find you if they're looking for you website wise etc okay so standyforwomen.com is the main sort of advocacy and campaigning um website and you can come and join us on many of our uh, free speech events uh, for women and men, uh, but vaginas first. Um, we also have, uh, you can be the billboard at adulthumanfemale.store in the US, adulthumanfemale.us, and you can find me on YouTube, Kelly J. Keen. Brilliant. I fully encourage everyone to do that. Thanks so much for taking time. Thank you.